This video will help you speed up Windows 10 very, very easily with one script that can be run on any Windows 10 install, whether you're running an older install or a new one. I'm running one that just got released a couple days ago, 20H2 version, but this video is meant for everybody out there. I'm not going to go into many technical knowledge. Just know it is going to be removing telemetry, Cortana, all the bloat, but it's going to leave everything else alone. In past videos, when I was stripping things out, we were taking out some functionality of Windows 10. In this one, we're leaving everything as it is. We're just removing the things that have to be removed on pretty much every single uh, install. So with that said, let's get on the desktop and actually go into removing and debloating it because I made it to where you just run one thing in your shell and it will literally strip everything out for you. Very easy, you'll have two questions to answer as I want to take your feedback. So if there's something that you don't like or you'd like to see added to this script, let me know in the comments because every month I am refining this script and we'll be making it better. So if you watch this six months from now, the script has probably evolved and bettered for sure. And I'll be remaking this video as I add features as well. But that said, this is version 1.0 and let's get into it. So this is a base setup of Windows. All I've done is installed Windows, thrown up a, a backup of it so I have an image so I can restore to this point. I have not changed anything with it. This is exactly what Windows looks like if you install it with no nonsense. This is just direct from Microsoft. I've done all the updates already to where we just go updates and security. Everything's right here. It'll say it's already up to date. And from here, Let's also show you the version of Windows as I am running the latest and greatest. So it'll run on any version of Windows. The past older versions are a little easier to bloat, but I wanted to make it for this video, the hardest version, which is the most recent. And you'll see I'm running 20H2, which just released in October of 2020. So what is my debloat script? I'll simply just pull that up for you really fast. And we're just gonna go debloat Windows 10. And you'll see, this is actually one of the top results on Google. So if you just type it in Google, you can get it. Or if you want the direct address, I'll put a link to this in the description below as well. This kind of walks you through everything it does. It does install some programs. Uh, the ones it doesn't prompt you for that it just installs is Chocolatey, which is an install manager, which everyone should use and should have on their system because it just makes your life easier. Notepad++, which is a better notepad. IR Fan View, which is a good replacement for just viewing images on your system. A lot of times people are using the built-in photos from Windows 10 and it's just not very good compared to that program, which is all free and open source as well. VLC, as that's most people's pick from v uh, video viewing or video playing. So I chose that. I, in past video, I said I liked MPC a little bit better, which is Media Player Classic. But I know most people do prefer VLC. So I did change my script to use VLC to accommodate everyone else. And Java, most programs do run Java or you'll need it as a dependency. That's it. This is pretty much the baseline of just I think every system should probably have these things installed already, but don't. And then it will ask for two different programs that you want to install. And you'll see that during the script run. And that's Adobe Reader. Some people want it. Some people don't. And then also Brave Browser, which is my personal web browser of choice. But it's a very, uh, you know, one of those decisions that I think you need to make. If you don't want Brave, you'll just say no to the question. Those are the only two questions you get when you run this script. And to run this script, it's very easy. You just come right here, say copy to clipboard, right click the Windows key right here, go into Windows PowerShell Admin. And if you see command prompt and you're on an old version, just go into there and then just type PowerShell and that'll get you into PowerShell. From here, we will right click on the mouse button. With that done, it'll actually paste it in here and then just hit the enter key. Now, a couple changes I've made, I'll walk it through as this actually executes. We'll go ahead and close that and maximize. This is creating a restore point. So if you don't like anything the script does, you can easily restore to the system restore point that was made. It makes a lot of the things it's shutting down telemetry and a lot of the things in the background. It is also downloading O&O Shutup. A lot of people love O&O Shutup. It's a fantastic tool that strips out and changes all the settings in Windows to be privacy oriented, meaning it 
removes all the bloat and actually changes everything. Now I created a, a custom hidden script that automatically makes those configuration changes for you. So you don't even have to do anything. It'll automatically download this and set it up for you and make all the recommended changes using ONO Shutup's recommended version. Right now it's just installing those programs I just went over. And now's the first question. Do you want to install Adobe Reader? We're gonna say no to this. And then do you wanna install Brave Browser? That's browser I like, but it already has Microsoft Edge, which is Chromium based as well. I'm gonna say no, just to make this go a little faster. So this is actually removing a lot of apps. As we saw on the start menu, there was a lot of apps. And then also the task manager itself has roughly 140 something processes running. And that's it. So the entire runtime of this script is about 60 seconds on average, uh, depending on your system. This system right here is about a five or six year old PC. So if it takes only a minute to run, it might run a lot faster on your newer PC. So with that, we'll go ahead and close this and I'm gonna go ahead and restart the PC and let's see what it looks like on startup. All right, we're back on our desktop here and everything is right there. Now there's gonna be one extra file, default file associations. I try to change this and I'm still tweaking this XML file, but you can easily just delete this as it was just trying to set your default applications. If you go to settings, all the privacy settings you'll notice has been changed as per the script. So if you go to there, you'll notice all of this is off. Microsoft's not gonna suggest apps to you. It's not gonna go ahead and send everything back to Microsoft saying they're using this computer this way. It still has some reporting. Obviously, I didn't change anything from Windows Store. I do set Windows updates to use only security updates instead of feature updates. And there is some programs that do get left behind and you can easily just come in here, uninstall those just to clean up the rest of this actual system. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this. And that's usually what I would do if there's any leftover programs. I'm gonna be updating the script so it'll get more and more of these, but Microsoft is always adding more with every update. So I'm tweaking the script to hopefully get all these every time, but no, there's still some cleanup afterwards. If you come into Windows settings and just type default apps, you can see what all the defaults are. You can see it changed all those things. If you actually did Brave Browser, it would set the web browser to Brave. It automatically changed video player and photo viewer using my XML. On the back end, that's actually not shown here is Notepad++ is the default for text documents and those types of things as well. When it comes to this script, there are some things I did not remove and I left them in on purpose, even though that's gonna be looked at as bloat by many. So I did leave OneDrive, I did leave Windows Store. So if you're installing games and those types of things, this will only uninstall the bloatware. It does not do a bulk uninstall like many dbloat scripts do. I also wanted to target this to where you can run it multiple times. So let's say you can run it once, do an update, you can run it again. I made all these decisions so we can just continually update and make this script just a good baseline. And then those that really wanna tinker, they can go above and beyond and bring that process count down. Now, one thing I forgot, what did we end up on as the process count? Let's go ahead and flip back to the desktop. Now, here we are back on the desktop. You will see a couple things. You'll see OneDrive down here. As I said, I did not uninstall that. Task Manager, let's see what it's doing. I did leave Windows Defender and Defender Updates alone. So it does have antivirus on here where a past script, I did remove it. This is a little more uh, on the higher end of things where I don't wanna be, but again, this will be runnable by every PC out there. 110 processes, effectively killing about 30 to 35 processes with this dude bloat script. Not the greatest, but something again, everyone can use. So I love this result and I think you'll love it too. But with that said, what else would you like to see with this? Let me know in the comment section as I will be doing updates probably in initially every week and then initially fall back to about every month and then hopefully get to the point where I'm only updating on the feature updates, which happens every six months. As I think everyone should use some type of script like this to make Windows 10 not suck. <laughs> so with that said, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.